All right, so hello everybody. Um, as Kevin just said, we, um, I'm going to present a couple of things regarding to the work we do in the context of eTrix at Imperial. Um, so there are going to be two sort of topics that we try to cover. Uh, this is work that's been done by my colleague uh, at Imperial. So I hope I'll be able to grasp and to communicate to you as much information as I can about these things. Um, I provided their contact as well, so if you have more sort of deep questions I cannot answer, you'll be able to, to get uh, their contact there. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, the work that we want to do with the integration of XNAT. Um, so XNAT, which is a product from the University of uh, Washington, and being used to be for the project, the, the Human Connectome project. Um, so Mei Young and Xi Jing have been the, the, the biggest uh, worker on this, on this specific topic in the Etrix team. And so what they want to do is they want to develop within Transmart the ability um, to connect to XNAT and retrieve imaging information from XNAT to be able to see them directly within the Transmart interface. Um, so this is a work that is already implemented. I unfortunately will not be able to make a demo because we can't access to our file infrastructure, but I have a video of it so you can see how it works. Um, so the first thing, as I said, is to be able to download the, the image for the given uh, code selection that you make in Transmart. Um, and then eventually uh, do some analysis with the image, but this is sort of being sort through at the moment. So as you can see here, we have the transmart interface, um, and this is the same as the grid view base, and inside of the grid view, basically add some information about the image uh, data that, that is available within XNAP. We have some links, um, and depending on the code selection that you're making, you, you'll be able to access the, the, the data that are available within the XNAP. So what we do is, we went. We 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 trying to uh, base our sort of pilot on this optimize, uh, which is a multiple um, sclerosis project being going on um, in the UK at the moment. Um, and so we're really trying to keep a balance between what we store in XNAP and what we store in Transmart or Etrix here. Um, the idea is that we need to maintain a, a sort of a, a small set of information on both of the different systems to be able to link the right, uh, the right patient to the right imaging data. So what we do here is we basically have within each tricks the medical history, the clinical level, the treatments, um, the other types of drug indications that are being uh, done so as in any transmart of instance. And then we keep the imaging part in the in transmart or the reference and the IDs of this image. And the, the, the image themselves will be next time. So the, the idea for the for the optimized project is to be able to handle um, um, MRI data, so the, the it's that kind of format for the for the project that we're working on. The scene data um, are also being stored in XNAP. That is very interesting because we can then export tools like the slicer directly from um, XNAP and be able to, do, to to compute the information and, and, and manipulate the image directly with the, the tool that people are used to have and used to using. And the morphology data then are being stored back into Transmart, so we move the data that we get out of uh, each uh, of uh, three sites, for example, and move them back into Transmart so we can do some interesting code selection based on this data. And then all the type of data that uh, XNAP, which is very flexible, is able to handle that we will keep, keep there for now. Um, so, as I said, the, the reason for this sort of drought storage is that we still want the, the users and the researchers to be able to use external tools that are already compatible with XNAT to do all of their image processing and image analysis. Um, and so this is really why uh, we want to keep that. Also, there is a lot of medical equipment that's, uh, that's already compatible with XNAT and that can load directly information into XNAT. So it's something we really want to keep. And this is why we, we decided to have to, to keep this sort of dual storage um, story. Um, so this is sort of like an overview of what it does. So basically, you have the data captured directly into XNAT as a storage environment, and also in Transmart. And then on the analysis file, we can obviously do analysis in Transmart, um, and also in, in, in software, uh, external software like that we slice. For the more technical file, this is basically the, the, the little addition that we made to the Transmart uh, schema. So everything is written as a, as a plugin. Uh, we do not touch the, the core Transmart uh, architectural code. We write all of that in the plugin, but there is a tiny bit of a database schema that's being added um, for us to be able to make the link between our subject ID within Transmart and the different um, image uh, ID as well within XNAP. So that's, that's more the, the techie part. Uh, 
So that, that's basically the work we're trying to do with XNA. It's, it's, it's a work that's in process at the moment. This is the whole workflow that this gives. So we have our, our image data that we push into, into XNAP. We are, we are able to put some annotation using other software. We have the image going to these other software. We can retrieve back the morphology, put it back as a clinical data um, within, within the, the, the transmart tree, um, and then obviously in the back of the support. So this is a little video that shows how that works at the moment. It's not final yet. So I'll go through it if that works. Oh, quick time is not going to be. That's not going to be awful. Um, all right, well, we, so in any case, we won't be able to see it. Um, so the idea is that, as I said, in the, in the, in the grid view, we have this instance access. At the moment, what happens is what, we can click on the link and retrieve the data. But in the future, we're planning to have some thumbnails as well as uh, you know, sort of very lightweight visualization tools that would be able to preview the data from exam directly within the instance. Um, for, for data that have multiple layers, or like snapshots, for example, when you have a different size, you can do some snapshots, there is multiple layers. We're trying to figure out what is the best solution um, for us to retrieve the imaging data. Is it to just display all of the different slides of a given image file? or just one by one and allow the, the researcher to just select. It's something that's very difficult to be we, thinking about, about this at the moment, and hopefully soon we'll be able to come back to you, or May and CG will be able to come back to you with uh, much more information. Um, so I'm going to put back there the address if you want to have more information about If you have a very big question about, about, about that, you can contact them. Um, and the second topic I wanted to, to talk about, it's a, it's a much bigger project that we have within Etrix, um, which is called the Etrix Study Repository, um, which meant to answer different questions. So, so in Transform, when you want to ask a scientific question, the way you curate your tree will depend on that question. You, you have different ways to structure your tree. It's very manual and very flexible. And that's a, a good, good point in Transform. Um, the problem uh, with Etrix is that we have to provide for the AMI project sort of a, a ground base to end up the data in, in a similar fashion with a similar structure. And uh, we can't do it from from scratch. And there are there are a lot of standards already out there popping up that allow us to structure information with the, with the study um, according to standards. For, for example, um, we have uh, CDISC here, for example, that we use as a, as a base for clinical data, but there is also isolated clinical data. So, so these standards already exist, and we want to leverage that um, to be able to use it with Transmart. Also, uh, today in Transmart, it is very sort of tedious and difficult uh, to load data. So regardless whether you come from a study that has already a standard uh, compliant uh, data format or, or, or storage database, the only thing, the thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to curate it for the specific use of Transmart with the specific cursor that it's being used and then load the data. If you have data that is free form, you're still going to have to go through the same correction process and you're going to take the same loading process and it doesn't change. And in case of incremental data, it's also very tedious because you can have to recurate your data set with the new, the new data app that you've been doing and then reload everything to Transmart because there is no clinical that's available at the moment. In the context of projects like the BioCred, for example, we do have a lot of data that's coming every single week. It's very interesting to have them available for researchers to use as soon as we have them. And, and that's a very huge process because currently um, we have to reload everything and we have interruption periods. And so it, it's something that, that we want to tackle. The place for this repository is right in between electronic data capture software and, and Transmart um, in, in this case. The ideas of, of the workflow we want to propose um, is so that we have all of the different uh, data standard compliant uh, piece of data uh, that we want to upload directly into, into the repository, which will be able to answer to, to comprehend them uh, directly, whether it's CDIS or, or ISA, which are the two ones that we base ourselves on at the moment. But Again, it's something that we can extend in the future to add some other standards. It sort of puts data into a more standardized fashion within the, the, the study repository, 
that we can then manage separately. So, the, so that, that is for the data during and already in a, in a standard compliant format. We want to propose for the data that are not uh, in, a, in a standard format the possibility to sort of design your study, um, to, to create your study plan according here to see this proposed, but we can envision other things. To structure your, your study with the different activities that are um, that you will do during the studies, as well as the different data that are going to be collected for each of these activities, um, and then be able to do some incremental loading on it, as well as querying and, and visualizing this, this data on a, in a very sort of basic manner. Uh, and then for the, the data that have free form, as soon as you have done this first step of sort of structuring your study design within this uh, this software. You'll have the possibility to upload directly your freeform data set and just link them, link them with, the, with the macro tool directly on this uh, sort of design that you've been, been, you've been putting together. All of that is then stored into the Atrix study repository in a unique, beautiful manner that then we can query ourselves to make some interesting things with it, including, for example, and for instance, uh, loading them automatically into Transmart. Which, which will suppress the, the burden of having to curate everything manually, which, which is still possible, but which is a very tedious process. Um, so, so at the, the, the so first dividing different parts, as I said, there is this curator view um, in which you can all submit standard data, or uh, with your legacy data using this, this GUI, which is there, to structure your uh, study design depending on what, what the study is about. So it's a very sort of simplistic drag and drop um, fashion way, way of doing things, a bit like for the, for the bulk selection. Um, and then select the different types of data for each of the activities that you will be uh, collecting. So that then later on you can do some incremental loading and you know, phase by phase, epoch by epoch for screening baseline treatment, um, you'll be able to add the relevant data right from the, the study models for it to be completely compliant with, with the, the given standard that you're willing to, to get your data uh, against. The, the overview of it is, um, is sort of a, once all of your data are in there, and it's very interesting to be able to, to see what you have available and what you can do uh, to create trees. So the idea would be from these data that are stored there in a standardized manner, able to create trees that fits the question that you want to ask, which is what's been done today completely manually, but you want to enhance it and, and create a tool that would be able uh, that would allow you to sort of drag and drop the different data types that you want for the, the, the subset of patient that you want and to structure your tree um, with the, the node that you wish to have so that you can import things directly to Transmart. So here we have um, a bit of demographic data overview and then we have on um, on the left, clinical assessment data. So this is the way to present it in CDIS. Um, and down there we have the way presented in ISA for the molecular uh, information. Uh, so this is still being worked out. It's, it's, I can't do a demo for that either uh, because we don't have the, the, the software fully operational yet. Um, and then we can do some interesting things, uh, as I said, such as launching the data directly into Transmart. Um, and have this sort of transmart tree designer that would allow you to create as many trees as you want for as many uh, scientific questions as you wish to answer with a given data set. Um, so if, if you wish to have more information about this specifically, and if I can't answer the question you might ask, um, go back to Mr. Gardner, his address is here as well. Um, here, somewhere here, and, and this is about what we so that, that's basically two things that we're working on at Etrix at the moment um, and, and wanted to share with you today. So if you have any <laughs> questions on any day, uh, hopefully I can answer it if I can. Well, I'd like to say that. Questions, comments, observations? If you want to go first. Um, so, hey, Dwayne, uh, the, the part of your slide with the data loading, yes, uh, 
this uh, one here. Right. The literature books. Is that something that you're working on now? Yes. Are you and so is that what is that? When is it going to be in existence? Uh, will it not operate? We, we have a data curation policy and uh, um, we publish that would be a completely different thing. I would be very interested in the voter tools as standard. Right, and so, so at the moment, the, 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 the domain tree is being implemented, and we're hoping to have a first version running for the you end know, of the year, uh, which would be able to take care of uh, the CDIS standards. Um, as soon as you, you provide the data set XML as well as the define XML, which is defining the standard specification, um, and also the ISA molecular data. And these are the two ones that we're really willing to sort of push at first, but then we will certainly extend. And, and so, I understand that to be the XML formats yeah. being sort of prior to you know, the pipeline and the literature, but then do you imagine pushing through the existing ETL in transpire or? So, that, that's a possibility. So what we want to do as soon as these data um, coming from standard compiling file are being stored within the repository, we have this sort of uniform structure for all of the different standards that we have. And then we can potentially use that and understand it to push it in a, in, in a given format. So it might be towards transpile, it might be towards something else, and we might be pushing it through the current details or through the detail that someone else we provided, depending on the work that's been done outside as well. So if you have your own ETL tools that have very specific oh, no, elements. We're looking for ETL tools. We have our own template. We're looking All right. for ETL. Uh, we're looking for ETL instances. Okay. All right. So, so the, the way we, we're implementing it is, uh, so these, these uh, so loading tools are plugins that enter given inter uh, interface specifications. So potentially, you have the ability to just communicate. It's an API. So you have, you have basically the ability to communicate with it. Um, and make it understand your given template or format that you have. Sure. I, I mean, you would love to collaborate if that becomes an official program. Sure, sure. And, and the, the, the thing as well that's very good is that we, we provide a mapping tool that is it's a UI, so we're trying to make things so that there is as less, um, as, as few sort of manual manipulation in Excel or whatever sort of software um, being done, right? We, if you, if you upload your template and that the application can just understand them, allow you to draft regarding to a given standard, your study design or anything, you can just map it with a drag and drop, it's very easy. Um, so that, that's the thing. If we can have as many input as we, as we can, it's, it's also very interesting. So, Can we go on this uh, slide here? I mean, this is uh, maybe a little bit geared towards clinical data. Has there any thought of expanding it out to more of the R&D level, of kind of allowing it to do auto curation and more of an individual level, whereas this is kind of larger data sets? I mean, that, that's a, a concern with our side. We're kind of building things to address more of on an individual level so that they can actually Query their own data, so again, much in the same format, it's, it's transitioned over to kind of a depository that can then actually be ported on the transform stuff. Right. Uh, okay. So, 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 so here, the, I guess the inspiration is, is, is a bit the same. Uh, we want to empower the, the researcher to be able to, uh, in this specific context, to use the data in the unified manner to create. The, the tree, the ontology within Transmart that will be able to answer the given scientific question. Um, th that's what we're trying to do now. And we, we're trying to do it for a user, a researcher for researchers of things. Um, so so I, I guess the, this, is, this is what we, we're going for. And, and I feel it's, it's sort of very close to what you, you guys are trying to do as well. But then, again, that's, that's the first round that we're hoping to have for the end of the year. And then we're very open to some suggestions. Sorry? Oh, well, we, didn't, we didn't touch the clock, right? Uh, 
thing doesn't work anymore. No, we didn't touch the code. Everything in Extra has been has been done the same way we did we dealt with the with Galaxy, uh, the plugin Galaxy. So we did exactly the same thing. Is that what you were referring to? I guess so. The question is also the same. So it's a So in, in this specific context, we haven't been facing such a deep problem because we sort of adapted the same approach we had with the Galaxy plugin, where the, the plugin itself has its own sort of schema, but it works standalone. You know, it's it's not something that we've added to the transform or to the transform database. It it runs um, on its very sort of tiny schema as well, again exactly the same as, as Galaxy, and just sort of maintain. A mapping table between the sample like the, the patient ID within Transma um, and the the ID of the images within the XNAT system. So we haven't we haven't touched it. Yeah. Now regarding to is it is it a viable option? That was the second part of your question, I guess. Yeah, I guess the question that the rules are guessing is one table that has the levels. Yeah. This one. It is based on the mapping table. Yeah. In that case, do you set up a separate Postgres instance for that table, or is it if you add a schema to the SQL system, Postgres database? So we so we had a we had a schema in the existing Postgres database, but so the idea is we, we capitalize it on the fact that otherwise we'll be accessing the database through through, uh, through Ibernate. Um, and that basically we have already available without providing any more sort of connection information, we have available with this schema. Which is again, it's a reference, so you can just drop that schema. If the plugin is not actually instantiated within the, the transmap, the schema does not exist, right? That plugin is, is fired up. The, the, the schema in question is fired up and constructed as soon as we enable that plugin. If you remove the plugin, the schema drops, right? It's something that's completely, you might say, transparent. It's a bit sort of like uh, you have a. Software for, for management that uses this sort of local database per plugin type of problem, where e each plugin has the control of its own subset of uh, of schema and is able to to manipulate the, their own subset of schema without touching the main application. The, the trade-off with this approach is that you have it to, to to maintain more uh, loose mapping mapping uh, tables. You don't have a direct relationship and you don't have any integrity between the data within the plugin schema and within Transmart. Uh, but but that, that's a trade-off that we decided to, to accept with, the, with this approach. Sorry, uh, for, for. 